day is going to be over tomorrow on Capitol Hill. Yes, it is. The confirmation hearings for Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh start tomorrow, and the Trump administration is making a historic move before they start. For the first time ever, the White House is blocking access to more than 100,000 documents related to Kavanaugh's time in President Bush's administration. Mola Lange explains just what that could mean. Democrats say President Trump is blocking access to documents they need to thoroughly vet Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh. The records are from his time as a lawyer in President George W. Bush's administration. So help me God. Congratulations. Senator Chuck Schumer called the decision a Friday night document massacre and added that it has all the makings of a cover-up. The White House responded saying it's turned over more than 400,000 documents, more than any other Supreme Court nominee. This isn't normal. It's not normal because we are not able to see 100,000 documents uh, that the archivist has just, mm -hmm. um, with because the administration has said we can't see them, they've ex right. exerted their executive power. Democrats will try to make the case that if confirmed, Kavanaugh will side with President Trump if he tries to shut down the Robert Mueller probe into possible collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia. He's in writing has said you should throw out the special counsel statute. At least one Republican suggested that Kavanaugh could try to overturn Roe versus Wade, the landmark Supreme Court ruling which made abortion legal in every state. If there's a case before him that challenges Roe v. Wade, that he would listen to both sides of the story, apply a test to overturn precedent. There appears to be little Democrats can do to block Kavanaugh's confirmation. Republicans are very optimistic that he is going to be confirmed with the support of all the Republicans and probably a couple Democratic votes as well. Kavanaugh will take his seat on the Supreme Court if he gets 50 votes. Mola Lange, CBS News, Capitol Hill.